What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Way of the Swan, and we have another tournament report for you guys right here. This is from Captain Con. We had two tournaments this past weekend, two big conventions, Las Vegas Open uh, down in Nevada, and then Captain Con up here in Warwick, Rhode Island. I, I was lucky to attend Captain Con and was able to uh, film all the games of Masters, so I'm going to have four awesome rounds for you guys coming up shortly in the next couple of weeks. So first round here, we have Mike Ireland playing Retribution versus Charles Soong playing Mercenaries. Uh, already, uh, despite the fact they were released very recently, uh, already we're seeing some theme forces on the table. This is a Captain Damiano Kingmaker theme force coming out of Charles Soong here, playing a ton of infantry on the table, pairing this with a Durgan Hammer Strike theme force. So we're seeing two theme forces on the table already, even though they've only been out for a couple weeks. Uh, the Durgan Hammerstrike theme force was a bunch of warjacks, uh, two drillers, six gunners, two blasters, so uh, pretty heavy gun bunny spam. Followed up by Forge Guard and a, a couple solos, uh, Hearn and John and a mortar crew. Uh, the Damiano theme force we have in front of us right here. Uh, also relatively uh, warjack heavy. There are four warjacks in there, three nomads and a talon. All pretty cheap uh, mercenary warjacks, but with Damiano's feet for plus three strength, they can get in and get a ton of work done. Lots of infantry, and this is a pretty uh, unique thing about Charles' list here. Most of the time, people are going to be teched for uh, heavy armor spam. So when somebody brings a list like this that has 40-plus infantry on the table, they aren't necessarily going to be able to deal with it. So uh, Charles can pick his matchups pretty easily or just uh, drop this infantry skew into somebody who doesn't have a solid answer to it and uh, steamroll them pretty easily. So the list has two max uh, steelhead halberdier units, a max crow's cutthroat unit, as well as a max trencher infantry unit, uh, and some free solos from the theme force. The interesting thing about this list is that it's uh, not focused on the trenchers. I think most kingmaker theme forces we see are uh, going to be focused on those uh, signar infantry that the list is able to take, especially with Damiano, who has dead eye and uh, some great buffs for them, uh, surefoot as well. Pretty big deal. Uh, but Charles has chosen to focus more on the uh, mercenary infantry, which he can spam pretty reliably, and like I said, get up to those high hitting powers using Damiano's feet. Over on the other side of the table, we have Mike Ireland playing Retribution with Assyria, Sybil of Dawn. No theme force here, although he is pairing this list with a Viros 2, uh, Forges of War theme force, giving all of his Warjax shield guard. Uh, that's a Viros list that includes uh, Imperatus as well as a Helios, a brand new Colossal, so we're already seeing new releases on the table, uh, and a bunch of Griffins to build up synergy for those two uh, big heavy hitters. But uh, there were too many infantry on the table for that um, Viros list to deal with reliably, so Mike ended up dropping Assyria into this pair. Uh, his Assyria list also very infantry heavy, so has a very similar uh, strength to the Kingmaker list that's going to be facing off against, bringing 30 infantry on the table, uh, or over 30 infantry, between three max units of Houseguard Halberdiers with a Solus Escorts and their Officer and Standard, as well as a max Strike Force unit with a Strike Force Commander. Uh, now, so this list is... Um, going to be very powerful since it's brought with Assyria, so she's going to give it threat range and a very powerful alpha strike using her feet, and she's going to protect it on the way in, um, bringing that chimera to put a blinding light on enemy guns, uh, especially units that can deal with these um, low armor infantry that Mike's going to be running up the table with. So with um, the incoming fire lessened by blinding light, uh, Imperatus coming in... Um, probably with admonition uh, or inviolable resolve to uh, to shore things up. Imperator is a very heavy hitter and uh, th threats a long way with Crusader's Call, just being all around an amazing melee jack. Uh, brings a gun to bear too, just in case. Uh, but all of these in, um, infantry with an enormous threat range and can hit very accurately with the feet. Mike's going to bring a very strong list to the table. Now, because we are seeing so many infantry on the table, we're going to see a very long game today. It's going to be a huge attrition slog, and uh, we'll see who, which player is better at uh, moving his models up the table on that death clock and making all of the attacks required to, uh, to clear the way. Scenario today, we have taken hold. So there's two flags on the table you can see, each one oriented towards each player's side. Players can dominate those flags, the, the flag closest to them for one point, dominate the enemy flag for two points, or control the enemy flag for a single point. The uh, scenario also has a kill box in it, so if either of those casters end, their, uh, end the turn, 
completely within 14 inches of a table edge, the other player is going to score two control points. Now, there's not a ton of range attacks on the table. The Mage Hunter Strike Force is going to be a problem for Damiano, uh, especially if he uh, gets Blinding Lighted and with um, a serious feet on the table. And Imperatus does have a long threat range with sidesteps. But Assyria um, has a, a gorgeous little forest to sit back behind there. So she's probably going to be safe for the most part of the game. And I don't think much, either of these casters are going to be in uh, particular uh, threat of assassination. Those uh, crow's cutthroats out the flank there in the rough terrain might be an issue for Assyria if they're able to get Deadeye and get a couple beads on her. Um, she is only armor 13, so a couple good gunshots will take her out. But uh, for the most part, I think we're just going to see a straight attrition slog. So we're over the Mike's turn right now, uh, running up and blind, casting a blinding light through that Chimera uh, onto the Trenchers. So those guys would be a problem for these uh, House Guard Halberdiers, especially if the House Guard Halberdiers want to run up the table. Um, and even with CRA, the Trenchers can uh, get to high enough powers to get through the Armor 18 of those Halberdiers. So uh, blinding lighting those guys is going to take them out of the game. Now... Uh, unfortunately, the Chimera is not in a good spot to blinding like both them and the Crow's Cutthroats, but the Cutthroats are a little less damaging against um, models like those Halberdiers, so they're not going to be as dangerous when those Halberdiers shield wall up to armor 18. Because the, uh, the Halberdier officer gives that unit uh, reposition, they're able to get up the table pretty fast, they can walk uh, 8 inches with desperate pace, and then reform another 3 at while in shield wall. So this list is going to get up the table very far, with Crusader's Call, it's going to massively out threat Charles' list, and Charles is just going to have to take that on the chin. There's not much he can do about um, uh, just uh, eating all these shots. Speaking of that shooting, we're seeing the Mage Hunter Strike Force advance up the table and take some shots at the Talon that's at the front of Charles' army there, embedded in that trencher unit. The Talon could be problematic late game, especially if uh, if Charles wants to make attacks on Imperatus, who has a high base defense, and with mechanical seizure on that uh, little stick he has, he can stationary Imperatus, get very accurate attacks on him, or potentially... Um, uh, um, trigger an early admonition so Mike's not able to keep those Warjacks as safe as he wants. Now he does do a significant amount of damage it looks like to the Talon uh, and uh, hopefully can take that out in the future before it becomes a problem. The Rusty Army moving up behind. Um, looks like Mike's just going to push those Halberdiers as far as possible in Shield Wall up into those Crow's Cutthroats. Not a ton the Crow's Cutthroats can do about it. They can take a couple of attacks but without Backstab they're not really going to get a ton of damage out. Back to Charles's uh, turn, and we're going to see what happens. It looks like we're going to see some attacks coming out of the Crow's Cutthroats' this turn, hopefully into those Mage Hunter Strike Force to try to get rid of them, try to lessen the imp the turn-to-turn -turn impact those models are going to have on Charles's army. Uh, at Rat 6, range 12, POW 10, the uh, Strike Force are perfect to take out most of Charles's infantry. If he's not able to deal with them early, it's going to be really problematic. He does have a couple tools uh, at his disposal. Um, he has a rifle grenadier on the trenchers, uh, which, if it's ever able to make an attack, could potentially kill those uh, Mage Hunter Strike Force. But uh, being blinding lighted, it's going to be a problem. Uh, he also has Orin Midwinter. He can uh, shoot some of Charles' models in the back and try to arc uh, lightning with his uh, arc lightning spell into those stealth models and try to get rid of them. And he can also jam with the uh, the one inch reach on the trenchers uh, or the two inch melee range on those halberdiers. So we're seeing Damiano move up now. He's casting some dead eyes out. It looks like a dead eye into the. Um, the Crow's Cutthroats there, they are going to be in range to take a couple shots at those Mage Hunter Strike Force, and Deadeye will certainly help out uh, trying to take him out. I think he also takes a blaster shot as well with his hand cannon. Uh, he's, um, that allows him to spend a focus to make his attack AoE 3. Those Mage Hunters are packed enough that uh, with a good deviation, he could have killed several of them, but unfortunately uh, didn't get the dice he needed. So we're seeing a couple of Mage Hunter Strike Force go down right now to the Crow's Cutthroats. Um, looks like some significant damage into that unit, uh, but without b the ability to ignore stealth, they're not going to make enough attacks to make a, a very serious dent. So it looks like four major strike force killed by the crow's cutthroats, um, but that was about it. Oh, and uh, one halberdier as well, so that was pretty good. And then those guys using that five inch reposition, massive reposition out of an infantry unit, and um. That's going to allow them to uh, hopefully get into a better position, not take so many casualties from those uh, um, house guard halberdiers that are going to go in and really murder them. We all just also just saw a uh, a arc lightning off of Orin Midwinter there. One steelhead halberdier ran up to the uh, just in front of that wall and. 
uh, Orin was able to arc lightning him in the back and kill an additional Mage Hunter Strike Force member uh, with his chain lightning ability. Cautious advance from the trenchers, getting them to the table, but with cover, so they're not going to qu take as, quite as many casualties from uh, any shooting that Mike brings to bear. But then the rest of uh, Charles's list looks like staying relatively conservative. We have a couple uh, halberdiers moving up to jam the arc node, make it difficult to get that blinding lout out again from Assyria, and the rest of them moving in to uh, potentially counter punch in case the um, halberdiers or imperatives move up. No, Charles still has his feet uh, ready to go. So if any of those heavier, heavier armored models move up the table, um, Imperatus, for example, any of those little infantry guys are going to be able to do significant damage to them. Imperatus is only base armor um, 18, so I don't know if he has an armor buff on him right now. But even at power 14 from those uh, the, the steelhead halberdiers, that's going to deal a significant amount of damage to Imperatus. And Imperatus has a massive number of hit points, but he's not going to be able to survive much damage. And... Uh, Without many Warjacks in this list, Mike doesn't have a ton of repair, just one Arcanist mechanic in the list, so he doesn't want to take that much damage on his big heavy hitter this early. Most of those Houseguard Halberdiers are going to, they do hit hard with this feat um, and with their mini feat involved as well, so they're going to uh, really, um, they hit really hard, but they're going to be able, you have to use those attacks to clear Charles' massive number of infantry he's put on the table. So Mike doesn't really want to um, lose his heavy hitter this early in the game. He's going to try to keep Imperatus as safe as he can, and he's going to, uh, to, to use him as a late-game beater. Now, Charles' uh, feet is going to be a problem. Imperatus probably isn't going to be able to go in on the feet turn um, to get work done, because uh, at armor 22, those, uh, those nomads are going to be pretty resilient, and he doesn't want to expose Imperatus that early. So I think we're probably going to see a feat from Assyria here, and to... Um, push those halberdiers up the table as much as possible, put a huge dent into Charles' uh, army, and hopefully uh, survive the counterpunch. Now, those houseguard halberdiers have the stats to be very resilient to uh, what remains of Charles's units. The crow's cutthroats are only mat 6. They're not going to be able to hit the defense 13 or 15 that those halberdiers are able to get to. The... Um, the Steelhead Riflemen can help a little bit. They have powerful charge, but that's canceled by the set defense on the Houseguard Halberdiers. Looks like we have Imperatus using his Halation Cannon to uh, remove the uh, Talon there, and that sets a couple trenches on fire. Pretty decent uh, activation out of that guy. And then we're seeing some charges, finally. So, um... Uh, actually, we see, it looks like a throw of the Chimera, using those two open fists, throwing at the Chimera, and uh, and knocking down a trencher, it looks like, um, and, while killing the Chimera as well. Uh, excuse, excuse me, killing the Halberdier as well. Uh, so, it looks like it's a feature out of Assyria, and we're going to see some uh, very high accuracy, very high damage output attacks from these Houseguard Halberdiers. The... Um, the, uh, the feat also confers True Sight onto the Mage Hunter Strike Force, and with the additional die to hit, those guys are going to be able to clear out as many of those Crow's Cutthroats as possible. So if they're able to um, kill enough of them, then it removes the possibility of those guys making uh, somewhat of a comeback by uh, making back arc attacks at the models that just moved in to engage. Uh, those Halberdiers are going to move up pretty far, and those Crow's Cutthroats could be problematic. It looks like right now he is attacking a Nomad. Um, that Nomad's getting pretty chewed up by the Jack Hunter on those Strike Force. And that's going to uh, hopefully help Mike in the late game. Looks like the Houseguard Thane's giving desperate pace to that lower unit of Halberdiers there. And they are charging into battle! I don't know if there's a mini feat this turn. Um, I assume that Mike would hold it. Those uh, The Halberdiers are only attacking defense 13 models, although the uh, ha the Steelhead Halberdiers there are going to be defense effectively 15 with uh, set defense against the charge attacks, but with a serious feat as well as uh, potential CMAs if he needs to. I don't know if uh, he necessarily needs to uh, to blow the mini feat this turn, although he might uh, anyway just because he expects to lose most of the unit on the comeback. Uh, so here they go, making some attacks, removing those uh, steel heads pretty easily. Although I think these house guard are far enough away from Assyria on this side that they're not going to be—they're not going to get the mini feet, or no, they're not going to get the feet. Excuse me. Um, so it looks like we have a couple crows cutthroats as well as a steelhead halberdier getting taken out by these house guard, and then they're going to be able to reform into position to engage the remainder of the uh, of the 
cutthroats there as well as a bunch of trenchers uh, those trenchers did get blinding lighted again so there's no attacks for them coming out uh no ranged attacks anyway they're just going to have to sort of dirtle around in melee where they're not really too good at fighting uh only power nine so they have a little bit of trouble breaking armor but those cross cutthroats in melee are uh, very sad um power 10 and uh they can't really get back strikes because they'll take free strikes and die looks like we have Imperatus moving up, taking some attacks, and then sidestepping away, I think. So we have some more models getting killed, and the second unit of House Guard Halberdiers charging in. Questioning a free strike, it looks like, and going to take some attacks on those Steelheads. So this is an interesting trade for Mike here. Uh, it looks like he's... Um, Charging in to do uh, two, either two attacks or two-man CMAs onto those halberdiers there. Um, and he's going to lose a lot of house guard. Now, the problem here is that the house guard halberdiers are far more valuable than those steelheads are. So for 11 points a unit, the steelhead halberdiers are uh, pretty valuable. And I don't think Mike was able to shield wall there. So uh, his um, house guard halberdiers are going to be pretty easy pickings for a couple CMAs from those guys. Uh, and he does need those House Guard Halberdiers for the late game to clean up those heavies. I assume there's a Damiano feat coming this turn, so those Nomads are going to come up at Armor 22, and uh, Imperatus is going to have a tough time taking them out. So it looks like first up we have Damiano going, uh, repositioning a little bit, and he's taking a blaster shot with his hand cannon again at those Mage Hunter Strike Force. Uh, it looks like Deviates bad into some Trenchers, but the Trenchers are uh, dug in because of Cautious Advance and don't end up taking any damage. I think the uh, we have the trenchers move now, uh, moving up to engage those uh, Mage Hunter Strike Force, and hopefully in order to take some of them out. Although, as I said before, only Mat 6, Pound 9, not super great in melee. Uh, and that's, I think, a problem that Charles is going to have throughout this turn. Most of his infantry, uh, because they are so cheap, are only Mat 5 and Mat 6. So he doesn't have a lot of high accuracy attacks to deal with those defense 13 or 15 uh, house guard halberdiers um where the house guard halberdiers have uh have the mini feet have a serious feet and have a cma potentially to get value out of their attacks uh we do have a couple house guard halberdiers going down to some trencher attacks uh those trenchers are unfortunately um not going to get a ton of work done it does look like we have a damiano fleet here the uh nomads moving up to get a couple of attacks out um on some models that they can get in there the Crow's Cutthroat's going next, making some attacks, uh, hopefully trying to get some back arcs, but I think the arcing of the um, of the House Guard Halberdiers on that side of the table, not very um, not very beneficial to them. So we get a couple of attacks out, uh, looks like one back strike, takes out a couple Halberdiers, but not a ton, and then repositions. Uh, to engage more of them, move a couple out of engagement, hopefully to get some shots next turn. But like I said before, not a ton of high value attacks there, so not really able to get a lot of work done. Uh, next up, we have the Steelhead Halberdier unit going in. Looks like a charge from these guys, taking out a couple more. Three man CMA on one of them. And then uh, these guys uh, received reposition from from Damiano, excuse me. Uh, so they were uh, they're able to get repositions out. One of them moving up to Ion and Holt. Uh, we're going to see a an Orin Midwinter arc lightning into that guy again. Uh, Charles using this trick again to bounce lightning into the high defense stealth models that Mike is bringing. Ion and Holt are going to print money as this game goes on. Holt's going to be able to kill two dudes a turn, basically with his two very high accuracy, very high power guns, uh, and that arc lightning getting in there. A couple boosts from Orin and takes him out very neatly so holt off the table for mike that's going to be a very powerful attrition piece he's not going to be able to use although uh, ayana doesn't um uh isn't super useful in this matchup uh holt is basically always going to be a useful piece um ayana's abilities don't affect non-faction models except for her ability to give magic weapons which is why she's in this list uh, but holt two rat eight power 12 guns is uh able to pretty reliably kill two of charles's models every single turn so there goes those nomads. I think the moves earlier were from uh, Warpath, potentially. So we have them uh, moving up the table and getting in the way. Imperatus is going to have to deal with those guys. But like I said before, at armor 22, Assyria has already used her feet, so he's not going to have the damage buff from that. Uh, he's uh, power 19 if he gets concentrated power. And I don't think he has a choice but to move in and attack these guys. He does have admonition, I think, on him. 
maybe, although I don't know which jack it is on, but uh, he could have admonition on him, which which uh, helps him a little bit. But with the number of infantry on the table, as well as that wall uh, potentially giving him a problem, uh, he, it might be possible for Charles to box him in and stop him from using that free movement to get out of melee range. We have the house guard Thane moving up. Looks like taking a shot into one of those halberdiers in the center there, taking him out as well. All the attacks Mike can, can bring to bear, trying to chew through all these infantry models. Um, next up we have, I think, Assyria going. Her arc node is engaged, uh, isn't really in a place it wants to be, so she's going to be able to um, cast Blinding Light herself, get those trenchers once again. Those guys are not going to be able to make range attacks for another turn. Minus two defense helping a ton as well, getting through, I assume they have Surefoot on them, uh, and the cover from Cautious Advance. Um, and then she uh, casts Velocity and makes an ancillary attack with, uh, with um, Imperatus. Moving her into a pretty safe position. She's covered by both those Warjacks. No chargers are going to be able to get to her very easily. And that unit of Houseguard Halberdiers, I assume, is going to push forward and keep the enemy models off her. The main Chunder Strike Force are going right now, moving in to attack those trenchers that engaged them. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be able to take many range attacks because they are in melee at this point. But a couple CMAs from those guys are able to take those trenchers out. They do ignore Surefoot because of Arcane Assassin. And then with Blinding Light on those guys, they're able to make quick work of them. The Chimera moves up, making another uh, patented double-handed throw at one of the Halberdiers, throwing him into a second Halberdier, and I think killing both of them. That's going to clear a lane for Imperatus to move up, so he moves up to engage that Nomad right there. So Mike choosing to put Imperatus into melee on Damiano's feet turn, that's going to be a pretty big deal. Uh, with the plus three armor of those guys, very high armor, and uh, Imperatus... Only power 19, but that Nomad had been chewed up by those Mage Hunter Strike Force on a serious V-turn, took a ton of damage, and Imperatus is able to take it out with an initial attack. So that uh, allows him to sidestep into engage both other Nomads. This is a very dangerous place for him. If those guys are able to get a uh, knockdown or a defense debuff of some kind onto Imperatus, they're going to be able to get a ton of damage into him, potentially getting through Phoenix Protocol with a bunch of power 18 attacks. Now some of the House Guard Halberdiers going, the ones on the lower side, uh, just moving in to continue this fight with the Crow's Cutthroats. Uh, a lot of infantry stabbing each other as is going on through this whole of this game. A huge infantry attrition fight, and we see the higher quality of those House Guard Halberdiers really coming through for Mike here. They're able to get some CMAs off, it looks like, um, and a couple of, of uh, individual attacks. Um, uh, just, just wiping through those uh, lower quality Steelhead troops. Um, and using a shield wall order. So they're going to be armor 18 against those models that aren't going to be able to attack, to, to charge and get the, the boosted damage to, to uh, pull through that. And with Damiano's feet already used, it will be tough for his infantry on that side to punch through these armor 18 on those halberdiers. The top unit of halberdiers is going to go now. Uh, they're able to take out a couple more infantry, and that's Mike's last activation. He's going to pass the turn. So a bit of a predicament here for Charles, but if he's going to be able to take out Imperatus, those Nomads are going to be nigh unstoppable in the late game. But with only Matt 6 on those guys, he needs to reliably knock down Imperatus to get those attacks in. He's looking for some Chain Lightning angles uh, for Orin here. Potentially getting Ayana, although I don't see why she's particularly important. She can be annoying to contest flags potentially in the future, uh, but she's just basically going to be a high defense stealth model. Um, she doesn't actually make any attacks or anything that could uh, potentially make uh, or help Mike. So we have a boosted headbutt here from one of the nomads. <laughs> Unfortunately, misses the boosted 7 and knock Imperatus down. So uh, he's going to be swinging on Imperatus with that defense 13. And that is huge for Charles right here. He really needed that headbutt to hit. He needed to drop Imperatus down to that defense 5. So his mat 6 nomads could get in there and do maximum damage. But not only did he lose the 2 focus for boosting the power attack. He's also going to lose a couple missed attacks from the other nomad. And that means Imperatus is probably going to scrap one if not both of these mercenary warjacks in return. Charles taking a second to rally here. That was a huge missed attack, and that's going to be a very big deal for the rest of this game. Uh, it looks like Mike didn't blow an admonition there, so I assume it's inviolable resolve on Imperatus. So at armor 20, he is going to be a tough cookie to take down. Uh, Charles still has a couple heavy hitters left on the table. He uh, stands Brocker, relatively hard hitting. Tamiana can get a couple points of work done, maybe with his little Pal-12 sword there, as well as Kel Baylock doing six points of damage a turn if he needs to. But without those Nomads reliably hitting and putting a lot of work into Imperatus, Imperatus is going to be a late game monster. He's a big apotheosis jack like a Behemoth or Thunderhead or a Death Jack, and he's got a ton of hit points and is one of those guys who really wants to stay put until the end of the game. 
Charles just continuing the infantry attrition game here, taking out a couple of the house guard halberdiers with his steelhead version. The last nomad going here with its full load of focus. Uh, interesting if Charles wants to attack Imperatus versus just uh, killing more of Mike's models, since uh, most of the damage he's going to inflict is probably going to be regenerated by Phoenix Field or by healing in the future. It looks like the Crow's Cutthroat's going now, uh, just moving up and taking what attacks they can. One getting on to the House Guard Thane, it looks like, not doing any damage, and the rest of them not actually removing any models. So those guys once engaged, no backstrike bonus for them uh, since they are in melee. Um, not looking too great for those guys. Uh, it looks like the Trencher's going now, repositioning around and taking uh, what attacks they can on those Mage Hunter Strike Force. These, uh, like I said before, these Mad Six guys just not doing enough work for Charles in the late game. They need eights to hit the um, Mage Hunter Strike Force, not getting any hits that activation. So those two units, two max units of 20 models, no damage done uh, to, uh, to Mike's army. Lord Midwinter takes out Ayana as well as gets a couple of the Mage Hunter Strike Force as well. But overall, a very disappointing turn for Charles, and that might actually be the uh, beginning of the end of the game. Since he put so many resources into killing Imperatus, uh, made all of his attacks with his infantry, wasn't able to kill very many of Mike's infantry at all. Um, the, the swing back is going to be enormous. He's going to lose at least one of those Nomads, and those House Guard are going to continue to win the infantry fight. So it looks like we have the Nomad going in on Imperatus, taking what attacks he can, but not getting enough done. Um, a bunch of attacks on him. Looks like he does trigger Phoenix Field, so that is something. So hopefully he can deal with Imperatus' last couple of boxes with some other models later on. But unfortunately, he's gonna he's very quickly losing the models he needs to, to make that happen. Looks like it's his last activation of the turn. Damiano runs to the flag, scores Charles one control point. Hopefully he can maybe turn that into something uh, later on in this game, but it still doesn't look great for him. Uh, having a control point lead is important. There are still house guard on that side of the table, although Charles has jammed up the center with those trenchers. Um, Stannis Brocker going in there to get a couple, uh, some more work done on the Mage Hunter Strike Force, who it looks like are mostly depleted. Um, but we'll see if the uh, remaining house guard can clear out those steelheads. Imperatus can hopefully. Um, take down those nomads and uh, Assyria can um, can grind this out this attrition game out to a victory now Assyria's biggest weakness does come into play here a little bit she has no way to damage enemy models she can't affect the battlefield uh, to remove any models at all so this late game phase is where Damiano really comes into play he's not great at fighting he has a pop 12 sword a little boostable hand cannon which is pretty good you can turn it into a blaster to kill models, but his uh, uh, personal effectiveness is going to come into play a big deal. It looks like the house guard on the bottom have won the fight. They've uh, repositioned into range to contest that flag, but they've cleared out all of the steelheads and all of the crow's cutthroats that were over there, uh, leaving just a couple infantry in their way. That rough terrain is going to be a little tough for Damiano as well, because with the uh, mo majority of his models don't have Pathfinder to go jam those guys up, and they're going to have free reign on that side of the table. House Guard, Halberdiers, um, killing some more Steelheads on the top flank. Looks like they are depleted. There's only a couple actual Halberdiers left, as well as the Standard Bear. But um, they are going to be able to kill enough of Charles's models that Assyria can probably dominate her own flag and begin scoring points as well. Now, uh, the trenchers in the center do become a, sort of a problem. I don't know if they've been blending light at this turn, so it could potentially uh, be possible for them to get CRAs in, uh, either put Assyria in danger or um, or clear out some models. Imperatus taking, oh, it looks like he took both of those nomads out, so that is a big deal. So Assyria safe on that flag, no enemy warjacks. Um, threatening her imperatus very relatively safe behind that wall he's um he had to move forward it looks like in order to get reach on both of them and he did already trigger phoenix protocol so he's running a little bit low on hit points uh but charles might have to to do something crazy to try to get to swing the game here at this late stage and it does look like there's a blinding light token on those trenchers. So just like they have been all game, they're not going to be able to make range attacks. They're going to make what melee attacks they can, hopefully to get some work done, but uh, not doing what they really want to be doing, which is shooting their sweet guns. 
Uh, so it looks like we have a charge from Stannis Brocker as well. Charles is going to put as much damage, uh, those high damage output models into Imperatus as he can to try to finish him off, hopefully have Damiano, give Damiano a chance to survive. And here we go, his Hail, Hail Mary play. Damiano charging into Imperatus, boosting his attacks, not getting a ton of work done. Armor 20 is really tough to get through with only a little POW 12 sword, and I think he's only mat 6, so he's not uh, really getting through Imperatus' high defense very well either. We have Orin Midwinter taking some attacks as well. It looks like moving into within 3 inches of Damiano, potentially to stop a spell i don't although i don't know if he has power tokens left um and mike just moving in to finish the game off here so damiano looks like a camping on two focus gets charged by a couple house guard halberdiers um to make some cmas on him obviously uh imperatus has been pretty heavily damaged so um i don't know if any systems are out he's probably fully functional given um how heavily armored he is and that his uh phoenix protocol regenerate fully regenerates his shield so he's going to be back up at at least 12 ablative um hit points before he starts taking system damage so uh it looks like we have some house guard attacks blowing one of uh, damiano's focus off to reduce it by the damage by five the other unit of Houseguard Halberdiers clearing out those cross cutthroats. In case this assassination run doesn't go well, um, Mike's going to have the ability to uh, move onto that flag and score some control points as well. Oh, Eric Mao, and it looks like he actually didn't end up killing Damiano. So uh, Imperatus may have been damaged at that point. Moving into attack uh, Assyria, she triggers an admonition and uh, moves out of the way. So she's not going to be attacked, and Imperatus gets killed. Oh my goodness! So uh, on the the second attack, uh, the second go through, uh, Damiano able to take Imperatus out. He looks like he's probably being blinded, lighted by Assyria, um, and then attacked by Houseguard Halberdiers, and finally stabs to death. So round one of the Captain Con Masters, we have a win by Retribution Mike Ireland, uh, finally grinding out a brutal attrition game against. Um, Damiano Kingmaker is bringing 40 models to the 40 plus infantry models to the table. Um, Imperatus really taking a huge beating to take down, and uh, eventually Damiano ran out of steam and was um, killed by the martial might of the House Guard forces. Really hope you guys enjoy this battle report. If you liked it, stay tuned, and I'm going to have um, the other four rounds of the Captain Con Masters coming up to you very soon. Uh, please remember to check out my channel if you are not already subscribed and you do like these battle reports. I have a ton of them on there, and I keep coming out with more um, and more and more as it's going. And uh, if you really like it, please check out my Patreon as well uh, and consider supporting me on there so that I can make even more sweet battle reports. Well, uh, that's it for today, folks. Stay tuned for another battle report and keep it classy.